Okay, so we've gone over the list. This customer came from Orlando. We're going to work through his list and then suggest extras if it needs it, just as a glance. Brake fluid is pretty dark. This might be uh, a separate project doing a full brake job. Uh, so look at clutch fluid. Clutch fluid is really dark. So like you've seen in the videos in the past, when it's that bad, first thing you do is check the master cylinder. Make sure that it's not leaking before you waste time flushing it. Because if it is leaking, it's going to continue to leak. All right, so up in here, look at the piece right here. You see that? See, it almost looks like grease is pouring out of there. Well, it gets worse to a point where it drips. So that looks like it needs a master cylinder. So this S2000 came from Orlando, which is actually kind of close. It's only 90 miles away. Even though that was probably a three and a half hour drive leaving in the morning, it's still kind of considered local now compared to some of our other customers. So he is getting a whole host of parts. He is supplying the parts, including coilovers and a few of the little accessory parts. And he might need a couple of pieces that we're going to supply. Let's show you what he's got and I'll show you what we're going to do. So the H fell off the back of his car and he wants us to put it back on. The stuff that you're going to use is this right here. It's the 3M tape. Part number is 38582. This makes life much easier. Okay, so we don't have the exact measurements for these coilovers like we do on the ones we usually use. So the preliminary adjustment is usually a mile off. Uh, we'll see. So we've got to bounce the springs a couple of times, go over it and check it, do the measurement and see how close that is. Actually, it doesn't look too bad in the back. All right, so measurements are not that far off. The back is on the money. The front, obviously you see before it was actually off, the, the whole car was different all the way around. So now we're at 26 and 26 and a quarter. So we're kind of bring it down three quarters and then measure it. This is our goal. This is our preferred height. So we'll go ahead and adjust that. And then we'll check these two because sometimes adjusting the front will adjust the back and change the numbers. That looks visually correct. What do we look like, George? Measurements, good. We're good? Yep. It looks perfect now. Yeah, that's the height that we like. Yeah, I guess except for the header. It's big in a bag. Yeah, big bag. Some of that. That doesn't look like a header gasket. That goes there. Yeah, that well, it'll it fit. came with it. So it fits around it. Trust them, it goes there. Yeah, actually, that's going to work out quite nice. Yeah, and then that one goes down there. Yeah, that one looks normal. That one looks too big. So these are parts for the shifter, and I always say buy the parts from us because we know what you're going to need. These two, yes, you're going to need. That is a shifter cage, it should come with a ball. That never needs replacement unless somebody lost it. That goes underneath around the dust boot. So that you don't need and there's no sense in paying to install it. These are the tube seals. This is the valve of a gasket kit. Okay, so this is the shifter at the S2000. The two pieces that we recommend replacing is this. We call it the cage. I don't know what it's called. There's the part number. I call it a cage. I know what it is. I gave the part number on the sends it to me. Also what I recommend is you replace this ball here. He didn't supply this, he supplied just the cage. But if you go through our Tech Wednesday videos, we did a how to, how to take this out, how to rebuild it, and how to re-grease it, put it all back together. It makes the shifter feel a little bit more positive, it tightens it up, 
it gives the car a little bit more of a new feeling. Um, a couple of people's asked about Tech Wednesdays. Why don't you do it anymore? Quite simply, too many people disliked it and contradicted things we said and gave us thumbs down and hey, you don't know what you're talking about, so <laughs> you try and give somebody something for free, they'll tell you they don't want it, you don't give them any more free stuff. <laughs> so, I've shown you, if you go through the video, it's not difficult, but I put some tips of which way to put this on and make sure you orientate it right, it makes the job easier, that way you don't do it twice. So there is a notch in here, but I went pretty detailed, so take a look at that video. More mail with Esther. Let's see what's in the box. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know we're filming a serious documentary over here. Yeah. Yeah, serious. For the radio station serious or like? Uh, the other one, serious. It's a different one. All right, back to part two. We'll edit that. He's a good guy, so we, we give him a break. Red. That might actually be for me. <laughs> are you sure these are for us? Oh! So this is the part number for the little ball on the end. And the trick is, is to heat up some water and drop this guy in here not as imperative here in Florida because it is not that cold but we have heard from people that live in cold estates that the plastic is so cold when they press it on the shifter it breaks so this is a trick we don't need it as much but it does definitely help all right so now we have a slightly heated ball we just need to put some grease on there and then put that sucker together that should go in there nice and cool. You guys know the reference right by now. If you do it wrong, it goes crack. If you do it right, it goes thud. And the ball is still in one piece. So hopefully you found that informative. Again, somebody on the channel, thank you. I wish I remembered your name, but uh, somewhere up north would push this on and it would crack. And I think he went through three of them and he was the one that talked about putting it in hot water. So thank you for that tip. And again, use that idea again pay attention to this so these we've shown on the channel if you remove these incorrectly you break these and this rubber boot over time can get dry rotted we don't see a whole lot of problems with these but here is the part number of the rubber boot here is the part number of the plastic retainer piece these actually snap together if you look at the way your old one came out you'll see this but let me just assemble this real quick and show you how it goes together it's pretty straightforward so these are the pieces that you're using your screwdriver to remove there is a little clip on here again tech wednesday there's something on that this has some cuts in it you see it from the back side like the slot and it obviously lines up with these so this plastic ring goes on the top and just line it up and push the pin through there again just be careful that you don't break the pins off you would have to be extremely rough to damage it but you'd be amazed sometimes what people do so take your time it should look like that once a shift is put back together which George is working on right now this simply clips right down it helps Obviously it makes this, the shifter feel a little bit firmer because now this rubber is a little bit stiffer but more so it stops the noise and the smells from the outside coming up into the cabin. Alright so now the shifter is back together this will be a little tighter confirm that this actually does go up and down and then we have our brand new boot to replace the old one is dirty but it's not broken we could possibly be the first ones that's removed it, so knowing how to remove it goes a lot. So the customer informed us that he is running Royal Purple in the engine, and I don't like to mix and change from one to another, so we actually ordered some Royal Purple from a local speed shop so we can keep the engine oil consistent. It did supply a Honda OEM filter. Now they do look cool. Very nice. 
Okay, so all done. You see the header there. Ash looks pretty cool in that color. And uh, George went ahead and cleaned the valve cover, of course. Sanded the letters, did the stainless bolts like we usually do. And of course, installed the master cylinder and flushed the system. So you can't quite see, but the pulleys are all down there. They look pretty trick too. So a few other little things that we did. Of course, we wanted to do a leak down test, which will share him the results. And of course, change the engine uh, with Royal Purple, did the transmission with Royal Purple and installed the magnetic drain plugs, the spoon pieces. So everything is done on this. We'll take it for a quick road test, double check the suspension height, make sure nothing has changed. I usually recommend you drive the car for about a week before you do an alignment. That way the suspension is completely settled and when you align it, it's not going to change after that. Typically, first few days, they might sag, uh, you know, eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths. But after that, they typically stay put. So there it is. We'll contact the customer a little bit later today. He can pick it up. And I think he's going to be excited to get it back. Oh! They're a bunch of beach balls! <laughs> Do you know what these are? Do you know what these are? They're the, they're the LAC official uh, airbags. Yes. All right. This is gonna be a separate video, but it's gonna be, I won't give it away, it's connected to the dumpster. You know how the dumpster gets filled up? Yeah. No, I ordered them, I forgot. Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna put beach balls in the dumpster? Yes, yes. Every single one is gonna get blown up. That is on a separate video, so stay tuned to that. It's not, I'm gonna give it away. It's not Esther's meal time. This is. It's always my meal time. I always give it the pleasure How big are they? They look kinda of small. I thought these things were 20 inches. George, get the air compressor, hold on. <laughs>